Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the United Adventure Company plays Delta Green Impossible Landscapes. Tonight's episode is titled The Labyrinth. Good evening, uh, I wonder what that means. I really, really wonder. <laughs> so glad that everyone could be here with us tonight uh, tuning in. If this is your first time tuning in, go ahead. Give us a follow. Give us that uh, follow and sub. Give us all the love because we love you uh, for being here. Last night, we played Weird. That was a lot of fun. If you tuned in, great audience for Weird last night. A lot of fun. Um, I guess that's about it. I don't have much to, to talk about tonight. I'm actually pretty... Uh, I think we're pretty caught up. There's some exciting stuff coming towards the end of the month. So if you want to get clued in on that, make sure you're in our Discord channel. But other than that... I think that's it so we can jump into the recap what All do you right. think <clears throat> who wants to do the recap this time we can do our amorphous recap All sure right. down for that let's see well who who's feeling to start who wants to talk about uh a certain front doorman maybe maybe that's a good place to start i don't know what I you're mean, talking about um <laughs> So we uh we 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 found a passage down to the basement. We we followed housekeeping down, talked our way into the basement, uh, and found ourselves um, kind of slinking through the basement hallways. Uh, Agent Undine was kind of spotted by Juliet. Juliet, yes, the Lizette. Uh, that is Mrs. Lizette, the wife of El uh, Elmer Lizette. I oh, hope I'm getting these names right. This is off of memory. So, um, while Agent Updraft and Agent Union, myself, we snuck down the rest of the hallway into the laundry and found a uh, out of order dryer where we were able to kind of shuffle our way into a tunnel. That tunnel opened up into a room. Um, eventually, Agent Undine caught up with us. And we, we started making our way through the room with a makeshift sheet rope as well to kind of make sure that we had our way back, I guess. Still not sure what the sheet rope was for. <laughs> but that's Agent Undine, you know. And uh, so eventually we we wind our way through these rooms, one of them covered in what looked like sand. At, at the top it was a glass roof looks like there was covered in sand we got through that room and lo and behold who do we run into but fucking mark because that's that's his nickname now it's fucking mark, mark. <laughs> it's mac <laughs> so it's mac rock mark rock we meet we meet up with mark rock who tells us that he's been trying to get to the labyrinth and shows us the steps that he's taken to get there um we ended up in a room full of mannequins. Is that marionettes? Yeah, marionettes, not and mannequin. I guess kind of a mix, right? Human yeah, size. Yeah. They got strings, so I guess technically they're marionettes. Okay. Uh, at which point we had some discussion about a wall, where to find the next passage, uh, and I went back to find Agent Ursine, who had been upstairs. Uh, distract. only after oh. I had given you the poison that Juliet, oh, that's it, right, had given me to give to her husband, who, oh, don't worry about it, he's developed a tolerance to it. That's right, that's right. And we also found out that they were both involved in the carnival. Oh, yes, the carnival. Did you share that with me? I don't know, yeah, if you did. okay. I had a flyer with a, in my hand. Oh, that's right, point. that's right. Um, so I went back to find Agent Ursine, who was. I had been spending the day waiting on everybody to come back after trying to create a diversion so mm -hmm. that uh, Lozette was not present at the front desk when uh, the rest of my party decided to go in the basement. It turned into kind of a weird, um, like, anyway, strange contest, how involved, failed, um, awkward staring, all that. Uh, so then when um, that didn't go anywhere, I did a little bit of my own research and I found that there is a 
path to the basement through the kitchen, which is staffed by marionettes. Um, and that I, in all likelihood, could fit through one of the kitchen window or, you know, the, the food delivery boxes and um, kind of squiggle through that, get on the other side and get in this, this hole cover. But I was also thoroughly of the mind that I did not want to do that by myself. So I waited until George came to get me at which time we realized that this bottle of poison was arsenic. I initially wanted to save half of it, but after being told that uh, Lozette's wife said that he needed the full dose, I capitulated and said, all right, we'll give him the full dose. Uh, George tried to give him the full dose and some coffee and had a horrible failure at persuasion, which ended up with uh, Lozette pouring his coffee out onto the ground, at which point George uh, attacked him with a nail on the desk uh, and then stole his gun and then after a fight shot him. So Lozette was dead, but he had already called in some people in bellhop uniforms to go downstairs and take care of our other friends who were digging around in the basement. So cut to that. And they come to snuff the rooster, but he ain't going to die. Mm hmm. But somebody did die. Boy, Luz. <laughs> so uh, down into the dark basement, uh, we were originally hammering away at a what sounded like a hollow wall with a pickaxe that Mark had brought along. We we're making pretty good time, taking turns, attacking the wall and then holding the light as the mannequins seemed to be moving around us slowly but surely. Um, after a certain point, we saw flashlights coming through the shapes across this ballroom floor and uh, we tried to prepare for them to arrive by uh, possibly like tripping them with our sheet rope but that it ended up breaking out into a gun battle that went poorly uh, mark was gunned down in his prime uh, i managed to slip off into the darkness amongst the marionettes and wreak some havoc upon the bellhops that had arrived to shoot us. Um, we ended up getting their guns. The The fight went really poorly, though, against us. If everybody wants to chime in with their experience of that. Uh, Updraft got shot. I got a real bad case of uh, shot to death. Lead poisoning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lead poisoning. It resulted, yeah, it, it resulted in his being shot to death. So, um, yeah, he that was pretty much where we left off that night, wasn't it? Didn't you there get a dance hall. with somebody? He was pulled into a dance with Abigail Wright. Oh, sorry, yeah, you wanted to know what Updraft was doing, yeah. So, Updraft actually ended up uh having this weird, I don't know if it's a dream or. A hallucination or maybe a result of blood loss but a moment where he uh he saw himself and abigail Wright uh dancing and uh she was she she told updraft that he had to find the bottle uh for jc lynn Yep. Yes. Right. Man, we're nailing the JC Lens today. with a Z. Oh, Lens with a Z. <laughs> I was like, it sounds like Britney Spears' little sister. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's how I remember it. Um, so we got to find JC Lens' bottle. Yep. And <clears throat> then, yeah, Updraft woke up. Dead. We were also told pretty much at point blank that 
we needed to talk to Asa Darabondi if we wanted more information about how to move forward. And if I remember properly, where we left off was a door that had water coming out of it. Is that right? That correct. is correct. You had okay. cracked. Uh, in fact, Undine in particular had finished his excavation with the uh, the bloody pickaxe uh, through the wall of this ballroom, and it collapsed. And you uh, uh, shown your lights that you had brought. You brought some flashlights, uh, and you could see a dark hallway. Looks like a like one of the hotel hallways. Uh, there are a few closed rooms, but you can see at the end of it there is a room with water lapping out the bottom of it. Someone is crying behind and the door? Someone is crying. Yes, exactly so. And we also, I think, do we leave out the part where the uh, on the previous floor, the glass had cracked and the quote-unquote sand had poured in, uh, oh, driving right. well, the second arrival at the, at the basement, uh, driving you down the stairs. It ended up being baby teeth instead of sand. I almost drowned in baby teeth. That's yep. right. That's right. That's a rough way to go. Honestly, wouldn't recommend it. Forgot about that. All right. So yeah, you are downstairs in this uh, damp hallway. Uh, your flashlight's kind of shining off the floor as the the ripples come through the door. Uh, who's doing what? I think I'm gonna sit for a minute. Did we just real quick? Did we take a sanity check before that, or? Did we need to for the water door? Uh, no. no okay. not, I don't right know if now. we took one or not before um, the game, game ended. I'm, I'm going to take a quick look around at my companions. How many of you need first aid? I'm not oh, sure. Need some first aid. Lozette can fuck himself. How many of you need first aid? I, I don't what? know what this uh, blood is mine or theirs. Uh, I'll take a look at you. Um, I look at George. Yeah, you definitely need some first aid. Yeah, got a um, gunshot wound. Updraft. You actually look like you're in pretty good shape. Yeah, Updraft goes ahead and like pulls his shirt up. Uh, oh, he was well. He had changed into the uniform, so he takes off the top. So he's just wearing like the white shirt, and uh, he's actually good to go for the first time in a long time. <laughs> That's what I thought. I don't know. How did you go from being so seriously injured to being fully healed? If you make a sanity roll, you can answer that question for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I died. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks yeah. for pointing that out to me. <laughs> yeah, the only person in the, like the only person so far here that okay, I got a pair of Hundred. I've got a pair of tens now. Sorry, all I am. <laughs> Told you I was Sorry, likely it to be a little like bit. It was like a horrible, a... horrible day. Let's just put that. Yeah. All right. I'm, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna be all right. Okay. So first aid all around. I'm gonna start with George. All right. So that is a pass, and you will receive. Where is my die? There it is. You will receive two hit points. All right. I'll all right. Them. I'm going to take a look at yeah. you now, Undyne. I already okay. got Undyne. Oh, you did? Boom. Nice. Okay, cool. I'm That's only lightly abraded. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's good because you only lightly got healed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And really, between the, between the four of you, uh, Union, Undine, and Ursine all have, are, they're just red from blood. Updraft, you're, you're doing great. <laughs> that tuxedo shirt. Yeah, nice I'm covered start. in brain still. Yeah, hey. reach over, pull a little. Oh, there's a baby tooth stuck to this piece of brain. What? <laughs> gonna... Yeah. So <laughs> this door. Have do we hear water running? Like we've we've seen the water pooling, but do we hear water running like in the walls or anything around us? Uh, you kind of listen at the walls. And you don't hear water like running through pipes through it, but you do hear, you think maybe like some distant party. Like you can faintly hear chattering and, you know, a 
uh, an outburst, but not like an angry one, like a, a laugh or something. Okay. But the uh, the the wall here is kind of a damp, like wallpaper put up. It's peeling a little bit. This uh, this area is not looking very good. Oh, I want to scrounge up a uh, pistol from the guys who were shooting sure. us. Uh, yes, Here, take this light. It'll help. <laughs> good idea. Yeah. yeah. How many How many guns did they have? How f- yeah. Um, you killed two i think is that correct or was there there was pickaxe guy yeah he died he exsanguinated really quick yeah didn't the other three get away actually now that i say that they dropped Mm. a lot of like i think they kept well they ran into other things besides us so i don't know yeah roll a roll a luck roll then all right there's there's, there's a chance they dropped something uh just first Okay. You're rolling for us. I'm rolling don't, for us. Don't hey, mess I, it up. I got my good die. All right. Don't my good die. Don't I'm going to mess, mess it up. Don't mess Today it up. has been a mess up day. Today has been yeah. a, a fuck you in the face day. So it got <laughs> messed up. Yeah. So no, no dice on the, the luck roll. I do uh, well, have do... Elmer Lizette's pistol. Yes, correct. You have Elmer's and then you do have one additionally that you can uh, take off the floor uh, looking around the bellhop now is no longer fi- uh, you can't find him but there is a mannequin wearing a bellhop uniform uh, nearby these are medium pistols yes uh, I think they are a d8 shot. d8 okay they'd yeah be light they'd be lights yeah yeah I think you That's specifically said mine was a revolver um, yeah. here we go a yeah. But 38 Colt Detective Special Snub Nosed Revolver. Yeah, I'm getting the stats post here. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, yep, threw it in there. Uh, you can ignore the 20%. That is uh, someone's skill at firing. All right. I'm going to take one of those. We said two? Uh, no, just one. Just Sadly. one? Yep, you cannot find it. It doesn't look like they dropped another one. Just okay. the one next to. Uh, a lot of blood where maybe a pickaxe got embedded in someone's head. Okay. Any flashlights or anything else laying around? Uh, yeah, there's have? a there's a flashlight there that he had. Okay, I'll go ahead and grab the flashlight then. And I believe Agent Union, you had brought a few down. I think you had specifically called that out. Yeah, we brought flashlights. We found a sledgehammer in the mm-hmm. maintenance closet. Yeah. A big, yeah. like a big five pound sledgehammer. Oh, so there's another blunt weapon. Oh, I'll take that. Oh, I'll take that. Okay. Does anyone have a pistol? I oh, I got a sledgehammer. I have a pistol. I do pretty well with pistols. If okay. there's an extra, but if there's not, I will be happy to be the run the uh, run and hide member of the party. I'll hand you this 32 I've got. It's excellent. There's no telling how loaded it is. Okay. Cool. This was well, a shot. I have uh, yeah. a higher chance of hitting than not. So <laughs> <laughs> I got my friend here and I pet the pickaxe. Oh, we do yes. good work. Got a sledgehammer, a pickaxe, and two pistols. Oh, we're, we're... listen, we came into this without any weapons. I'm not looking at a gift horse with mouth. Oh, I'm, I'm not saying. complaining. I'm just laughing about it. It's great. It's great. All right, so the 38 was what you gave me, or 32? They're all the same stat. Yeah, it's oh, a, it a small pistol. Yep, it's a D8 of damage, and then D8. it'll just do a firearms check. Yep. Perfect. I put it in the uh, the Zoom chat. Oh, okay, cool. It's also in the handouts, China. Perfect. Yeah, and yes. you kind of have that that moment of you, uh, you're breathing you're you're taking a collection of the weapons you know you need to be ready for this next room i want to take a quick look to at this weapon to determine how many shots i have left uh yeah roll a uh, d6 i think we rifled the pockets i can't uh, remember what i don't i don't i don't remember us doing that 
Well, you know where the outfit is. So yeah, if you want to... Five? All right, there's five shots in the gun. And... Uh... I have five ammos. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm Draft. Follow me over here for a minute, if you would. Yeah. We'll go find that one mannequin that strikes like a yeah. bellhop. Yeah, roll a, roll a d12. So you kind of find him uh, doing that. And then uh, Undine, you're grabbing into the pockets, right? Get in well, there. I'd knock his block off first. <laughs> okay, that's fair. And then uh... I go through his pockets. <laughs> this again, he says. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it's sort of a repeat experience. I got a nine on a D12. All right, there are nine bullets uh, kind of uh, spare in a pocket. There we go. Awesome. I could take three of those and reload mine because only there were three shots Perfect. expelled from that. So that gave me six. Well, that's just a, just about a perfect number then. Five, it is. right? You got a little thirty-eight revolver, right? Yeah, is it a five shot? Yeah. Those little snub noses are thirty or five shots. I should know that. I have one in my safe. They all kind of blur together <laughs> in uh, melt green. I'm, so I'm glad. Is. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned because I assumed six shots as well. Kind of classic. It's all good. So there you go. So there we go. Charter Agent Ursines is fully loaded, as is uh, uh, Unions now. Okay. We're good to go. Well. As good as we're going to get. Exactly. As good as we're going to get to go. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. All right, so he's doing what? Yeah. I think I would like to approach the door and I want to stand outside of it and put my ear against it and listen. All right. Um, you hear uh, a gentle kind of sloshing of water from inside. You hear a voice uh, that you've, you've talked with Asa before. Um, you would recognize as his, but it's hoarse as he's kind of uh, wheezing, almost just sobbing to himself in this room. But it sounds like it's only him. Yeah, it does. And a dead body. But yeah. All right. <sighs> hey, y'all. Ace Darabond is over there. It sounds like he's alone. Um, do y'all want to open the door and, and go talk to him? Or do we have something else we need to do here first? Um, I'm on board here. Uh, open the door. Yeah, is it unlocked? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. unlocked. All right, I was going to say I'll try the knob just real slowly. And once I know it's unlocked, if everyone else is just lined up, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, open it up, push it open. Yeah. All right. Uh, forcefully, gently, how are you? Uh... No, like you would open a regular door. Okay. Yep, just open it. Um, and as you open the door, you see uh, a very similar hotel room to the one that is upstairs, but it is cleared of almost all furniture. Uh, in the center of the room, there is an oversized wash tub. Uh, sitting there filled to the brim with water. You can see it lapping out of this. Uh, Darabondi sits next to it on a uh, wooden chair, just kind of hunched over and holding his head as he's sobbing. Uh, and you can see in the water, there is a small body just floating uh, and kind of bumping against the side of the tub a little bit. Hello, Asa. And he, it sounds like he had no idea you had opened. He stumbles backwards. The chair skitters across the floor and he falls on his ass. I'd say you're going to hell for this, but I think we may already be there. Yeah, pretty sure we're already at hell. I just yep. kind of <laughs> enter into the build, into the room and like immediately updraft begins to fan out to one side um basically trying to make sure that 
if Asa makes any sort of aggressive action, like Updraft's going to charge him. He's fully anticipating for this to be a contentious interaction. Yep. And you can see now that he's kind of fallen down, you can see his hands are gray and like modeled from being underwater for so long. And he is soaked, uh, particularly the front half. It looks like he maybe just finished drowning this child. And he's uh, he's just kind of gulping down air uh, and looking at the four of you wild-eyed. Should we roll sand? Um, sure, yeah, roll sand. It doesn't Thanks, say this here, but it I'm, makes it makes yeah because you did just find a guy like drowning a kid, so yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, I. Uh, that's is that a no? That's a fail. <laughs> I am okay with this. <sighs> I got a thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i failed and roll Which a d6 I, I think you were you had this is something that probably yourself. would yeah. bother me yeah violence yeah. and helplessness because it just happened while we were administering first aid yeah don does not believe this is a real child <laughs> i i don't be, believe any of you are real so <laughs> i'm gonna be pushing this off onto a bond all right Who's, who's taking the hit? That my best friend, Jessica. All right. Go Jessica. ahead and roll a D4. She is my buddy at my real job in the hospital. She's a nurse that works with me. Okay, so that's a two. I'll lose okay. two will. Yep. Two off the bond and then two from any sanity loss. That That hospital seems like a long ways away right now. Mm-hmm. All right. And then the sand. All right. Hold on. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yep. Because that would have been, that was a bad one. That was a six. I was just yeah. like, um, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have push some, that one off on that. I have some stories about adapting to violence in another game <laughs> through a similar event. <laughs> so, all right. All right. So that's violence and helplessness. So okay. Yeah. What is? How does that look like with Ursine? I have always felt that the right thing to do, uh, just the right human thing to do, moral, ethically, all of that, is to take care of people who are weak and vulnerable. Um, and that it is the system's job and systems failing that cause uh, those people to be harmed. So I do not deal well with seeing a drowned child. Um, and I was particularly knowing that, you know, maybe in the back of my mind, maybe if I'd moved a little bit quicker, I could have I could have saved this child. Um, But she's able to push some of the sand loss off onto her friend Jessica because they worked in a number of of pediatric cases in the hospital where, um, you know, children came in and they had been abused by their parents, whatever. So um, that's, that's how she push the bond off or pushed off some of the sanity loss onto the bond. Wonderful. And yeah, you you're just kind of seeing this. I I suppose your mind is more transfixed by the others in this uh this body just kind of in the water. Mm-hmm. Uh what is everybody doing then? I mean Asa's recovering himself, but doesn't seem like he's in his right mind, if at all. I'm picking up what uh, Agent Updraft is laying down there, and I see him fan out to one side. I'm going to kind of walk to the other side of the room, flank this guy. I'm kind of reading Updraft. Kind of look over and give him a look like, you give me the signal and it's on. Kind of, you know, that look. (laughs) And Updraft's choked up on the sledgehammer. Like, his... His dominant hand is right up under the head, you know, and uh, he's standing there with his left left side of his body forward. 
Um, Asa, do you remember us? Why? Y yes, from the library, the library, uh, the bookstore. Yes. Um, I, I, I had the dream again. I didn't want to. I don't want to kill the children anymore, but the king told me I had to. I had to kill the children. The king. The king. Tell us about the king. I kind of lean down and crouch towards his level. I, uh, the king, he spoke through Bale. I had the dream. And, I, and the phone call from, and they told me who and where, and I didn't want to. You know, I didn't want to. You believe me, right? I believe the majority of you didn't want to. And that's why we're going to talk. And you're going to tell us all kinds of useful things about the king and Vale and anything else you can think of. Uh, uh, I don't. The, the king, the king, he's. What did, I, I don't know what to tell you. He's uh, he's at the party. But Bale, Bale works for him, you know. Mm. So when Bale says to the king wants something you do it i'm listening keep going but it, it has to happen what has to happen the, the, the killing he kind of looks at the child again it has to happen why, why? it's in the play do i remember that in the play uh no, no. Not. How do you know it's in the play? <laughs> because I had to kill the children and it's in the play. Well, how, how do you know it's in the play? Because I killed the children in the play and Bale told me oh. it's in the play and mm. I'm in the play. Where did, we're in the play. Do you have the script? No, no, no. Well, I, of course, I gave it away. Where did you get the child from? There aren't any children here that I'm aware of. I, yeah, I went outside. How did you get outside? Through the front door. It's easy to leave the hotel. You just have to be careful because they're always out there watching. Who? The ones with the masks. <laughs> Where's... How do we get to the party, Asa? The party, the party. You want to see the king? I really no. want to see the bottles. Yes. Yes. We are looking for a bottle. We were told that you are the person to talk to about how to find that bottle. If you can't help us, then, I, and I look at the, the kid in the tub, I say, then I might have to avenge that poor child's death, if you get what I'm saying. Oh, I'm sure Ace is <laughs> going to help us. He's very reasonable. If he isn't, he knows how long things can be drawn out down here. How the hell do we get to the bottles, Asa? There's there's a room just down the hall, but you can't let it eat you. What? But, what? Let what eat you? The room. You can't let it eat you. I mean, the room? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I, I have an idea. How, how does it eat you? I don't know. People go in and they don't come out, but it does. The sommelier. The He's got, he makes the bottles. The bottle maker? So he comes yes. and goes out of this room? Yes. I think if you follow him, 
you'll get where you want to go. So we have to follow the bottle maker. Yes. What is his name? Uh, he doesn't have a name. The sommelier is what he is. Doesn't what does matter. he look like? How will we know it's him? Um, he has a uh, um, purple silk robes and slippers and he wears a mask. He's got the corkscrew on the cord. I've seen him go by, but I, I don't think I've been brave enough to follow him unless I have. I don't think I found my bottle yet. So, yeah, I'm fairly certain you have not. This this sopping, slobbering, blubbering puddle of a man. Yes. I will, I will walk over to him, kind of behind him. Just put my arms under his, into his armpits. Be like, well, come on. You can show us the way. And I'm going to lift him up off the ground. Just, just enough, like, helping him up. Yeah, and your hands are immediately just, like, wet just from grabbing him yeah. under there, as you kind of said. <laughs> he, uh, he weighs a lot less than he probably should. You're, like, you see him in the suit. You're getting the impression he is extremely malnourished, uh, and just kind of wrecked as a human being. If we go together, you'll have some help. <laughs> okay. Okay. I've got some time for the next one, I bet. I, I wonder if you find your bottle if the killing can stop. <laughs> Trying to reason with a crazy person here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yes. Let's find my bottle. As they're having this conversation, I have gone back to the wash tub and I am going to try to pull this child out of the water. Um, I expect that this child is dead, but I feel that I have a responsibility to at least confirm that before moving on. Agent Mercy. You walk over to the body and you, you know, grab its arm to kind of pull it out and you feel yourself plunged deep into the water mm. and you kind of look around and the tub is far wider than it should be, far deeper than it should be. And you can feel yourself, you're so, you're so far down, you don't understand how. Go ahead and make a strength times five check. This is going to go so well. <laughs> Does she disappear into the tub from our perspective? Uh, we'll get back to what you that's, see. Exactly. <laughs> uh, no, that's a fail. Um, take a D4 and okay. make uh, make another one as you're, you're pulling yourself up through the water. Uh, that is another fail. Another D4. Three, so that is five. All right. Keep keep it going. You can do it. Okay, now that's a pass. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Great. From the other's perspective, as Ursine, you're struggling and you're feeling the air leaving you, you break the surface. The other three see Ursine, just who had reached over to touch the arm, suddenly keel over onto the ground and just starts vomiting up hair, water, and sand just onto the ground in these big patches. The body in the tub is completely gone. Uh, yeah, go, everybody go ahead and roll sanity. That's a fail. Uh, that five was yeah. that was the five uh, hit points. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I figured. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh man, I uh, hit so hit bad. it on the nose. Nice. I'm okay with this also. Critically sane. Yeah. Okay, I lost two oh, nice. six sand. <laughs> two sand. Child drowned. 
This, it's okay. This, uh, yeah, this whole thing has really upset me on a number of levels. I'm, okay, I mean, so honestly, a bad you're, room for Ursine, you're, yeah. you're the yeah. one. You're really just an extension of the empathic part of my body and the, my compassionate self. So it would make sense that you would hurt having experienced this because mm. I don't feel anything. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, you said you know uh, you know some first aid, right? Of course, you know I know first aid. Mm -hmm. Can you can you please check me out here? Yeah. Can I? I didn't know you had a cat. <laughs> Roll for drowning. Seventeen. Perfect. All right. Yeah. One. One. No. Yeah. Better than nothing. Okay. It is. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Don takes off his torn um, trench coat, puts it around her. There. All better. This smells awful, but thank you. I appreciate it nonetheless. Did you like slip and fall in or something? What happened to you? Uh, I don't know. Where the she's baby vomited go? a lot. <laughs> yeah, more importantly, where is Asa? Like, I'm watching him this whole time. Oh, I yeah, have... it there wasn't that long. In oh, there. Okay, he's just yeah, he's just hanging out. Uh, maybe almost literally, if Agent Union's got him hoisted up. Yeah, he's like a, a wet noodle, right? Just literally. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Union, I, I guess I'm going to look at Union, just look at him and be like, excellent work, overwhelming drive for justice. You, and he points at the at Asa. He's like, let's go. The Somalia is waiting. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe <laughs> this way and he kind of points one of his uh, hands the flesh kind of wobbles as he points I look at my overwhelming sense of justice and I give him and I think at him very hardly <laughs> now you know <laughs> yeah yeah this is not fun. And I'm like, I'm any... holding him out and just lead the way. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, so everyone is following Asa, it sounds like. Uh, Ursine, you're a little bit more wet for the wear, but you think you've got most of the, uh, the gunk out at this point, although it takes a little bit. And Asa leads you down the hallway a little bit to one of the doors off to the side it looks like any of the others uh you can see on it in cracked letters uh is the room number 830 and he uh he kind of grabs the doorknob and twists it slowly and looks in and for the fort view yeah it just looks like a normal hotel room I was gonna say when he when he bends down to kind of peek his head in, I'm just gonna shove him through the door, knocking the oh. door wide open and just toss him in the room. I, I've had it with this guy of like being all like, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> Updraft smiles <laughs> and gives you this look. And he, I mean, he tumbles into the room. Uh, he takes kind of a nasty spill against the bed, actually, and kind of like dings his knee and uh, cries out a little. But uh, uh, you see he's just kind of holding himself up against the bed. Oops. <laughs> walk in the room. Yeah, we'll, I'll step in right behind. If, if nothing happens to him, then I'll step in. Just using him as bait. Oh. like. Oh. There's something in here that's going to get us. It'll get him first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, is everybody going into the room or no? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And the four of you walk into the room. And uh, 
you start to hear this music and you're kind of listening to it and looking around and you hear a <coughs> um am, am i am i boring you for are you come on come on and you uh you kind of shake yourself and you realize you're back at the park and agent marcus is looking at the four of you kind of concerned uh you can see there's uh the people moving around uh kind of having this like festival vibe uh there's a little bit of a, a music cranking from the side <coughs> are you are you good is everybody all right shit we went off script Sure. So, um, okay. Well, look, um, thanks for all being here. Uh, draft. I cut him off. What did you see here? Oh, this is the first place that I saw that sign. Look back at, uh, agent Marcus and just, you know, Let's uh let's hurry it up. Yeah, you're grateful we're here. We know we know that part. Wait, is Granny here? Is Gran with us? Yeah, is Gran with us? Or is um, it No, it's Union. Agent Union. It's Agent okay. Union. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that even more solidifies that this is just like me rehashing a memory. So I'm like trying to hit the fast forward button and be like, okay, so come on. We're all here yeah, we Washington Park. Okay. And then Do you have something to tell us? Uh, yes, of course. Um, he pulls out some files. Uh, we've got this missing girl uh, uh, by the Abigail name of... Abigail Wright. Abigail Wright, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, um, okay, uh, I guess you really have been keeping up on the news. Uh, there is... Uh, do, you, do you know where she disappeared from? Yes. Uh, the McAllister. Yeah, McAllister. Okay, great. Yes. Um... Well, we have reason to believe that there is an occult uh, connection. <coughs> excuse me, uh, connection uh, there. We're we're going to send you in um, to catalog the room, uh, and we will um, obviously, uh, if you see anything too wild, we need you to um, to, to mark it. Uh, just write down what you have. Don't interact too heavily with anything. Have you heard the expression, I hope you die in a fire? Um, um yes. Have you considered it as a well, occupational goal? <laughs> what? No. Have you considered no. dying what? in a fire as an what? occupational goal? What's you should really state? set it. You should really you should really set that higher on your list. It's actually achievable. What, what's yeah. today's date, please? Uh, he gives you the date that you first came yeah. to. Uh, like the thing. August the yeah, date. 8th? Yep. Yeah. 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 August 8th? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I, I hear there's a really cool speakeasy at the uh, McAllister building, right? Um, I, not that I'm aware of. I think it's just um, just apartments. Oh, so you've never you been haven't un you haven't unlocked the hidden level. Yeah. Is there a craft table around here yeah. somewhere I could get like a sandwich? I need a yeah. hot dog. Oh, it's Manny's York, Deli. Right? Yeah, we could go. Let's go to. Oh, I wouldn't know about Manny's Deli. I, I was thinking the the green room. <laughs> you would. These though. guys are coming from. Because I do. Oh, that's. <laughs> That's right. Um, How could you not know where Manny's Deli is? Let's go to Manny's Deli and get some food. Yeah, that would, uh, since we're here, we might as well. Yeah. Agent Marcus, um, you're behind. You, you, you're behind on this story. You need to catch up in the timeline. Uh, you missed and, your mark. It's all right. It happens to the best of us. Come on, though. We'll take you to Manny's. We'll get you called up. Mm -hmm. and we're going to start leading him away. The bell hops didn't miss yeah. their mark. And you um feel you uh you see he's stuffing these papers back into his briefcase as he's kind of trying to get stuff around to follow you and you feel like this tearing of realities you're walking away 
from the mission. Everyone make a sanity check. I'll, I'll look back to it, Mark's Leave it. You won't need it anyway. We're going to tell you everything that's in there. Oh, now that's a fail. That's a pass. pass. A 90. All right. Hard fail. Hard this fail. Is, <laughs> this is wild. All right. Yay. So those that pass, go ahead and lose a sanity. And we will return to you because you vanish. Oh. <laughs> from reality right it's you're just walking down the street you feel this rip and updraft in union yeah you're just of course uh yeah you're just kind of left uh marcus is running up behind you uh so is the uh what what is this about manny's what are you let me let me see can i have your briefcase for me i'll carry that for you agent marcus um no 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 uh i've got it thank you okay just real have everything Real quick, what did we lose if we failed? Oh, oh yeah. Roll a D10, please. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, a D10. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's wow. where I'm like, bad. this is a nasty. Ouch. <laughs> Five. Five. Oh, God, oh, two. Thank goodness. Um, only a two. But that does put me on a breaking point. All right. Actually, it pushes um... me past a breaking point. So. <laughs> Nice dice cam, by the way. Thanks. Um, all I right. I use so, IV cam with my cell phone, and it connects wirelessly to my computer, nice. so I have multiple cameras. They're not a sponsor of the show, but we're open. They to could be. But they should be. Yeah, they should be. Yeah. <laughs> um, updraft. Are you pushing any of that off, or are you going into temporary time? Yeah, I forgot. I can do that. Yeah, I'm going to try and push it off. <laughs> Absolutely. Fuck Nick. <laughs> <laughs> all right so r- roll a d10 yeah or roll d4 a d- uh d4 off. d4 yeah. yep all right three all right so not bad uh three willpower three from mm. the bond mm-hmm. and then instead of losing the full five sanity you only lose two mm-hmm. so yeah things are going great <laughs> yeah mm. <laughs> Hey, where's Look, um... I'm I'm sorry you two uh are I know it's kind of a small team, but you're all we could get. Uh and we really need you to just you guys have a good eye for this. We just need you to, you know, get this done with. It, it should only take uh like a week, maybe. Yeah, of course. Um and what about the missing time? Missing time? Yeah, yeah, you're you were gonna ask us about the missing time. About if we experience missing time, why were uh, why why did I need to tell you if I was missing time? Uh, it's, uh, I don't think I asked you that. Um, oh, you were going to, you were going to. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why it is that I was trying to remember this. I just, uh, it's it's a standard question I use to see if if people have fallen under the sway of something else i i'm getting very uncomfortable with this Uh, would you mind just following the mission or do we need to get another team in here no no you're fine we'll we'll go back to the mission figured you might be hungry it's all good all right i'll reach across the table and take his if his full, if the, all the stuff is in his bag, I'll just grab the bag and be like, "We got it from here. Don't worry about it." Um, seriously though, you might need to reconsider occupational goals. And just standing, like, just standing <laughs> up and like walking out. I well, I guess we didn't make it to the deli, so I just took it out of his hand. Yeah, and just like tapped uh, tap Union on the arm, and turn around and start to head back to the path that we know the script to follow okay yep i'll follow and, see you later all right. marcus and i'll start rifling through the papers as we're going if okay. something flies away that's imagine they're all blank anyway <laughs> yeah no uh in fact when you look through the papers they're exactly what you received in the first uh first bit a little bit of detail on abigail right a little bit of i think you had some details on the McAllister, maybe um but it looks okay. like it's the two of you going to uh to meet with graham and 
really it feels right almost that you're doing this I mean, why wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah how how am i going to experience my memories through someone else's perception that doesn't make any sense at all of course it makes right so oh go ahead i was gonna say and, and as we're kind of walking away part of me's like wait he said there's only two of us there were weren't there four of us yeah, you remember the other two. Where the hell did they go? And I start looking around, like, almost in a panic, like, because I just, just crossed that threshold that I'm like, wait, wait, it's just us now? We got to go through all that shit again? What the hell, man? Where is my compassion, my compassionate teddy bear self, and my inquisitive sense of curiosity? I'll go try to run the course again to see if I can't catch back up with them. I'm going to need them to do this. All right, right, okay. I'm I'm with you, man. I just wow. I just they were right here a minute ago, and now they're gone, and that shit just doesn't happen. We got to catch them. You said how are we going to catch them? Oh, we just have to self. We just have to catch up. So we're behind. It'll be okay. Okay. I trust I know me. the way. I know the way. I'll speed run it. <laughs> and literally, like, starts to walk faster and just to do all of the exact same motions that I know I have to do. Okay. Uh, going to the McAllister to begin with, I think. Yes. Um, especially because I, oh no, never mind. I just lost two sand. All right. Not yet. <laughs> It was greater than two. Yes, we're going to the McAllister because that's where we have to go, and we'll go meet Gary. And uh, yeah, yeah, and you uh, for Agent Union. This is fairly. This is new. You have right. not run this before. Yeah, you're watching Updraft walk with purpose and, and the hammers. And a, yeah, and a hammer. Yeah, and a hammer. And, well, actually, no. He's you've got the briefcase. The hammer's not here right now. You you you're back to your old outfit, your old equipment. Damn it! Oh, I got my gun. Yeah, you got <laughs> your gun back. Nice. Um, and honestly, it it kind of feels like you're warm. Like this is a nice, cozy blanket. Like you, you feel safe here. Familiar. Yeah, I don't like that. It makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, and so, you're both feeling this is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, uh, this is right. You go to the McAllister, talk with Gary. Yeah. So, question: When we go to the McAllister, are there other? Would like Grand be in there cataloging stuff and uh, you don't have don't... any papers that suggest uh, an agent beyond the two of you. Okay. Just wanted to see if we saw anybody else in there besides us. Just Well, you there was look a... through the window. Uh, I suppose Agent Union has never seen. Um, you do see there's a police officer that is uh, uh, kind of looking around the room. Uh, updraft, you recognize it as Graham Giridanda. Okay, so if, if I look in there and scare Donda, I'm just going to skip that and go straight up to the fourth floor. I don't have to. I already know what's going on here. <laughs> I don't need these clues. I have these clues. There's something that I'm trying to remember, and I'll know when I reach it. That's that's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah. Why I've trapped myself in my own head like this. I I mean, who am I to ask me? Yeah. Uh go ahead and make another sanity roll yeah <laughs> uh, both the two of you is your uh skipping giradanda heading upstairs success success well, that's that's not a success that agent is... updraft you disappear take one and you disappear agent union take another d10 oh, as you watch you're following uh agent updraft upstairs 
and he just vanishes as he opens up the uh, the fourth floor door. Okay, just You're just great. two more. I'm doing great. Oh, I'm doing great, I'm, y'all. I'm, 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 I'm going to kill all of your characters. <laughs> you are. You said it. Oh God. Uh, yeah, and you, uh, Agent Union, you find yourself up on this roof of an unfamiliar building, uh, alone. It's uh it's kind of chilly out. But I'm on the, the roof. roof. Yep, you're on the roof. So I, I didn't I didn't wind up in the no. uh speakeasy. I honestly I don't know if Updraft even told you that that was there. I don't remember. If you oh, you know it. what? I don't think he, he did. He just Yeah, he just led we you up the to the roof the for some reason and Well, when I experienced it last time we were on the other side of the door and I never went out. So yeah, I wouldn't I believe, have known right. that that connected. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. yeah. The only way I knew it was in the McAllister was because of the fire that they told me about. Yeah, right. we had told him about the McAllister, but we didn't tell him specifically which door. <laughs> and he did experience that room from the other side. Yep. Yep. Surprise. So I'm standing on the roof. All right. What's. Is there any. Uh... What can I see from up here? I'm like looking around. What do I? I mean, it's uh, it's New York City. It's kind of the late afternoon. Um, it's you're hearing the normal traffic sounds. Uh, like I said, a little chilly, uh, but but a fairly nice day weather wise. I'm <laughs> contemplating doing something very rash and stupid, because at this point. <laughs> I am. I'm really at a loss. I have no team by myself. I'm on the roof of this building, four and a half, five stories up. I'm gonna jump off the edge and see what happens. Gonna jump off the edge? Yep, I'm gonna jump off the roof. Because at this point, I'm I... like, you know what? No, this shit ain't real. People don't just fucking disappear. I, I'm. I'm bailing. I. I I'm gonna real, go where they went. Yeah, real quick. Real quick. Um. You're not five stories up. The McAllister's three stories tall. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, well, three. You're like, okay. Yeah, so it's a three story jump. You're like, you know, five stories up. Nope. It's three three. stories. Okay. Make sure you go ahead Finish first. Yeah, I'm just going to like swan dive right off, right off the top. Okay. I don't believe I'm actually going to die. This is all some big, um, big show. People just I... poof, poof, poofing make one more sanity check and i will say this one is incredibly important don't <laughs> like, be scared. i'm contemplating whether i should jump off the roof or not and my sanity roll is gonna tell me i would yeah. say make the sanity <laughs> roll <laughs> ouch a 90 no. a 96 and a 97 <laughs> that i have rolled on sanities. <laughs> Those dice need to go in the trash yeah. get another set these were my good dice they mix or match right them. Yeah. yeah, you got to you got to mix and match that. Man. No. Another D ten. <laughs> so, <laughs> look, you gave uh, me every opportunity. <laughs> you um, don't feel bad about this. You know, Just make it hurt. It's um, Delta Green. Make it hurt. <laughs> well, what I'm thinking is three stories up. Did you you said you swan dive? Did oh, you yeah, actually that first? Sw- okay. So, we the way we'll leave out on this is graham oh let's hold on hold on hold on uh you you could have him attempt a uh power roll or a willpower roll or anything Mm. to try and because jumping head first off something is very difficult Mm -hmm. because in the air you end up flipping it that's why most people land flat yeah. when they jump is because yeah. you, you th- everyone knows to jump head first if well, you want to die staying head first is the problem just saying for realism yeah <laughs> go ahead yeah go ahead and roll a i think <laughs> everybody's which way is lucky dice rolls. which way is lucky yeah roll a pow yeah, right? and if yeah, you pow. succeed you will swan dive into the a power ground. okay yep Rope. there you go i think that's fair oh wait that's a that's a failure. There ain't no way that's a, his power is that high. Uh, oh, your power almost certainly is that high. Oh no, that's 08. Yeah, yeah. So oh, power, shit, 70, I read it backwards. So, yeah. yeah, you. <laughs> the fugitive so, starts playing in the background. <laughs> so what we see 
uh, as we uh, kind of cut out is uh, Graham Giridanda is walking around Alice's room. The sun is falling. He's uh, looking at a radio on the wall. He kind of pokes at it. He sees this broken Walkman. And out front of the building, a body slams and splatters uh, headfirst into the uh, the ground. And he kind of shakes himself and runs outside and does like the, what the, what the hell? Like, the, are you FBI? And we pan out the other three. You are back in the hotel room. Asa is not there. And Agent Union is not there. On the bed, there is a glass bottle that has the name... Oh no, why did I go away from it? George Earl Lawrence written on it and you realize now is you're looking around you have this feeling like something has been cleared from this room and you're looking around there is uh, there's a couple more of these bottles on the bed a couple other on a table but they're not done you can like see the work on them they have not been etched and they're not completely done and you see there is a strange machine a like a lathe machine that has a bottle locked into it hey y'all got my bottle yeah your your teammate (laughs) is uh no longer there everybody go ahead and make a sanity check yeah but on the upside i found my bottle you did. <laughs> Just not the way I wanted to. Success. Uh, what was this roll was... for? Sanity? Uh, sanity, yep. Okay, I failed again. <laughs> and I failed. Yeah. Go ahead and roll a d4. Join me. You hear from the bottle. Join me. I got a one. Ah. Boy, I'm being nickel and dime. What? One of us. One of us. Yeah, this is a bad room. I just wanna wanna say, wouldn't recommend it. Oh boy, this is fun. Like <laughs> I've never like... had such a fun character death. I really. <laughs> that was... Hey, you got out. I think. Maybe. Maybe. So remember this room that eats people? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, the three of you are in this room. You can see there are these bottles around, uh, and it is just you. I'll start looking for JC Lens. Yeah, I'm going to start looking mm-hmm. at all the bottles, too. Yeah, it, it doesn't take very long. There aren't that many of them. You don't see any that are uh, marked with that do, name do we recognize any of the names um they uh there's only really george's that is complete and I'll take uh, it. yeah yeah hmm is there anything in that bottle mm-hmm. you think there might be like there's you kind of shake it and there's a little like wiggle to it Hmm. Okay. Not like an undine. He's not here. This is his bottle, and there's something in it. This is. This was Union? Mm hmm. I'll hold it up to the light. I assume there's like a, a lamp in the room. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a lamp that you pull it up, and you, you can see it kind of gets refracted through this glass and stuff. You. You think there might be like a liquid or a vapor or something in there. Something moves when you shake it. But it's actually a little hand just waving at you. Yeah. <laughs> you see a perfect swan dive <laughs> in yeah. like an 08 of a swan dive in there. Couldn't get no Maybe better. Man. If he's in here, somehow mm. we can get his bottle 
out? I'd like I to mean, know that. We could open this bottle and see what happens. Yeah, I'll drink it. You don't You're need to drink it. Person. We just need to open it. Don't make any rash decisions yet. Wait, there's a lathe here? Yes, there is a lathe there. You can see there is a uh, unfinished bottle. And there's, uh, there's carving tools. I want to yep. look at the unfinished bottle. Mm -hmm. What's, uh, uh, is it just like where they started cutting the bottle? Yep, the, so the glass no that's there. That's yeah, just it's glass. just a plain glass cylinder, really. Is there a blank label nearby? Uh, yeah, there's a couple on the table. Is the bottle cut to the point that it's usable? Uh, no, not the one of the lathe. Okay. No, it, it it looks like it maybe just got started. Um, you're kind of pulling on the bottle, um, Agent Ursine, because you're trying to uncork it. It seems like it should be fairly easy, but you cannot get purchase on it. You, you, you just need, cannot get this open. You need his corkscrew. Where's Asa? Hmm. You're right. Ace is gone, though. Grab Did the hammer it? and walk right out the front door. Did the rim eat him? It's possible. I mean, it ate George. Well, George is... This place, we'll find George. We just have to keep moving around. Hmm. When I look at the bottle in my hand, I think we might have found him, but we don't have a way to know until we can open the bottle. I guess we find the bottle maker. And as the two of you are talking, uh, Agent Updraft has kind of stormed out, and he's heading towards Asa's room when he sees another door open, and a marionette walks into the hallway wearing these dark purple silk robes, uh, velvet slippers, and it has this pale mask on. Around its neck is a fine silver corkscrew, uh, and it starts to move towards the room that your uh, compatriots are on. As you see, it does have strings uh, that go up into these tracks in the ceiling. It's just moving along this track? Yep, gliding along towards the room. I'll reach out and snatch the bottle opener. Come. After the commotion, I will go to see where a draft is gone. Mm -hmm. And you almost run into it as it's trying to go through the door at this point. Uh, Updraft has taken this bottle opener, uh, but it glides up towards Agent Ursine and uh, holds out its arms. I <laughs> don't be scared to give him a hug. God, <laughs> I'm not giving that thing a hug. I'm not scared either. I'm just not stupid. So the room it came out of, I'm peeking in there. It wants mm -hmm. the it, bottle. Maybe give it what it wants and we'll follow and see where it goes. That is something I, I would do. And then I just hand the bottle because I'm like, I don't know what else to do here. Yeah, and it it takes the bottle and it uh, kind of uh, nods towards you. Can you open and... that bottle? Oh, I have the corkscrew. Oh. Assuming I could snatch it off of it. Uh, go ahead and make a uh, uh, like an athletics or a dex check. Got to give you some options here. All right. You want athletics, dexterity, or strength? Um, if it's athletics or dexterity, you could grab it. That makes sense. I think that to grab it would be those sense. two. Yeah. Okay. Strength uh, might be a little bit more pushy. Damn, dude. All right. Yeah. Wow. The cord isn't even that difficult. You're able to kind of loop it back over its neck. So you have this corkscrew on a cord. Uh, it right. is a fine silver corkscrew. You think mm -hmm. it's got some nice, like, filigree in it, like the detailing and whatnot. 
But uh, so Ursine is giving the bottle. Well, if I see Updraft snatching the corkscrew, I am not going to hand him the yeah. bottle. Okay. It, it's just kind of uh, following you with its arms outstretched as you're <laughs> going back towards Updraft, I assume, or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the room that it came out of... I'm, is the, that door still open? Yeah, like, uh, that door is still open. Uh, what's what's going on inside there? Looks like a plain hotel room. Uh, you actually... It's kind of dusty and nasty looking in here. Um, but there's like a section of the corner you think maybe this thing was just kind of laying there, like the dust isn't there. All right. I'll turn around and look directly at Undine in the eyes and just do we do we open it and motioning towards the bottle that our scene is holding. I don't have an answer for you. No, you are exactly the one to have an answer for me. If anyone would know, it would be you. Well, there's a couple probabilities here. Possibilities. Maybe Union is in the bottle. And by opening the bottle, we'll set them free. Maybe Union is in the bottle. And taking the bottle out of this place will be the kindest thing we could do. Maybe opening the bottle will subject him to some horrible fate. Or he might just pop out right next to us. So I believe you all have a little bit of information about bottles from it has been a few weeks. Uh, if you'd like to make an int roll, you can to remember some details. That's going to be best. No. Crit pass. Crit pass. pass. Mm -hmm. Oh, doubles, yeah. Yeah, you remember because you, uh, Graham had found his bottle. And it seemed like only he would have been able to open it. And additionally, uh, someone, I forget who exactly, and maybe you do too, had told you that the bot, like each bottle holds something like a truth for the person, hmm. but only for them. Oh, that okay. sounds familiar. Yeah. All right, then I'll open it because this bottle is really mine. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And you clinch in this silver thing and you pull and the bottle does not open. Uh, Sorry, now you're, you're not really fucking with king. me. <laughs> <laughs> now you're really fucking with me. Ah. <sighs> The once and future why no <laughs> and i'm gonna um look at the marionette where's our friend it has no expression on its face it's just kind of following up draft that you know a pace away just uh focusing yeah. on the bottle i didn't really expect much so it's focusing on the bottle yeah so I'm going to look over at Undyne and try to, to grab his attention without saying anything. Just think real hard at him. And lean in. You. So I'm going to try to lean in real close to him and say quietly so that nobody can hear. What do you think happens if we cut its strings? It ceases to have locomotion. It ceases to be what it is the obvious answer and with that as she says that i take the pickaxe and sever his cords <laughs> okay. thank you that was what i was getting at all right and it's uh it probably takes you a couple swings of you know getting it unless you want to roll and get like critically well but it doesn't seem to fight uh, as you cut its strings like its hand falls 
and eventually it just kind of collapses to the ground. Well, it shan't be making any more bottles, at least. We'll close the door Wait and then open the door. Wait a minute. I think it, we just had not... to say. Oh, go ahead. Okay, it's not him. It's it's wearing his clothes. It's just as likely, yeah. Did it We've kill already him? seen them wandering around wearing updrafts clothes. Yeah. Did it kill him and take his th- take take the corkscrew? I have a feeling that will be important. Yeah, I won't pull the corkscrew out. Wait a minute. What if the the dummy is just trying to put on its costume? Yes. So that it and can be like the rest of you. Maybe your scene could put on the costume. No, no, no. Maybe the dummy wants the bottle so it can put that costume back on. I think the costume precedes the bottle. Yeah. I think the costume is why it wants the bottle. Yeah. Had it been dressed as a bellhop, it would want bellhop things. Like if you had taken its hat, it would try to put its hat back. Mm -hmm. They're like ants, but not nearly as efficient, I guess. But my question is, is, it had been laying here for a while. If it has his clothes... And Asa referred to the bottle maker as a person. What has happened to that person? It's a good question. Was he eaten by his own room? Mm. It doesn't seem very likely, oh, does it? Oh, he is somewhere else. And he left his uniform. And this thing managed to get it. He's not doing his job. He left it on autopilot to go Maybe to the party. Yeah, maybe he's at the party. We just have to wait around for him to show up, I would assume. We Why is he going to show up? Room. He's got this dummy doing all the work for him. Oh, but remember, the bottle in there wasn't finished. It, it wasn't going to be able to do that. It was, uh, though, it wasn't looking at the unfinished bottle. It was looking at George's, which was finished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's two different people. This guy, the Somalia, is at the party. Got this dummy to do his work for him. Well, if you put on that uniform, then you're the bottle maker. And with that, Updraft just strips down and takes the robes and puts them on because... My overwhelming sense of curiosity just informed me that's probably what I need to do. All right. Yeah. You you snuggle into these uh, silk robes and uh, these slippers, and you've got the corkscrew already, and they are perfect fits. Like, they could not have been made more for you, like, if they'd been measured. And you have its pale mask as well. Way to go, me. And as you kind of uh, put this on, you have... You feel like something's out of place. And it's it's one of those, like... Uh, it takes you a second to kind of... It kind of hits you where it's like, something's wrong. Something's really, really wrong. And you realize that... That bottle's not where it's supposed to be. That bottle belongs downstairs. You need to take that bottle downstairs and put it away where it belongs. That makes sense. So I'll uh, I'll take the bottle back. I'm assuming when I got dressed, I would have put it down or handed it to someone. Yeah. And after I put it on, I'll take the bottle back and uh, be like, yeah, so it's just this way. Okay. And be- Begin to lead through the hallway to go downstairs. Yep, and 
just like you thought is like oh yeah it's this is easy it's through this room and you open the closet and yep there's the stairs down and you take that for a little while and you come across another stone tunnel and you got to make a few left turns in here and then and there's more stairs down and more tunnels and you start to descend further and further into this and as you're walking you're starting to see uh alcoves on the wall uh each of them holding a bottle and you are fairly certain you have made it into the labyrinth i want to look at the uh bottles are they all do they have dates on them uh there are no dates but there are names uh but they're unfamiliar to you yeah are they in any sort of order? Like, are they in alphabetical order? Or are they just kind of, as they came, chronological? Um, go ahead and make a pow roll. Ooh, I'm good at that. One second. All right. I got to do better than a 75, which for those of you keeping track of my sanity at home shows you how far I've fallen. 26. 26. Oh, how the mic <sighs> Or jump off roofs. Yeah, <laughs> and you're uh, you're pretty sure uh, there is a system. It doesn't. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to others, but you're pretty sure, given enough time, you can find a bottle if you're looking for it. Okay. Well, then uh, we'll just go find JC's. Okay. And. Uh... Yes, uh, and I think that is a good break time as you start into the labyrinth because there is uh, there's some stuff we'll be doing. There's nope, stuff. Stuff. All right, we're gonna take a break, uh, refill our snacks and waters and all that good jazz. You all stick around. We'll be back after these messages. Enjoy the break.
everybody. We made it back finally. Got the characters sorted out and had a little group therapy session for for uh, real life stuff. So if it weren't for Delta Green, we would all go crazy eight to five. So glad that you stuck with us. Thanks so much for hanging out. We know that took a little longer than usual, but uh, we're here for your pleasure. I'll cut that out. Never mind. That's that's yeah, never that's, mind. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> George is in a bottle. All right. So, anyways, genie, you genie, guys. Genie. G- George the genie, rub his bottle. <laughs> no, I'm gonna I'm cut a all George this in a bottle. Rub me, gonna rub me the me. right way. How do you get negative viewers on Twitch? Is that possible? <laughs> oh, bro. You haven't even all heard right. me actually try to say. Yeah. All right. So, it's bringing people back. You are. You have followed Agent Updraft. Uh, further and further down beneath the hotel, beneath the basements, uh, and you find that you're starting to get to the point where you're seeing these alcoves with bottles, and finally there is a uh, archway that you find uh, with a small circular stone room and these tunnels leading off into the darkness. Uh, You've had your flashlights out, but at this point, if you don't have your flashlight on, it would be comp- like pitch black and you're casting it down these hallways and you just see uh, bottle after bottle. Some are on shelves, some are set into the wall. They're all unique. There's there's no exact copy that you can make a sense of. And uh, yeah, Agent uh, agent Updraft, you've got a kind of a tug. Like you you feel this pull down one of the hallways of, I need to get this bottle over here. But you also kind of know where stuff should go in general, so you can kind of use that for your own devices. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get we're, we're going to get to this bottle. Okay, we'll get to it. But right now, I need to go get the JC Lens bottle. Okay. So, we're going that way first. All right. Are you saying any of this partially out loud? Oh, um I'm just going to, I'll mumble, Updraft just kind of mumbles the lens, you know, you'll find the lens bottle. Like, he's still talking about it out loud. Um, he's thinking about things at you real hard, if it makes a difference. Don is his general over-smiling self. <laughs> yep. He's going nuts. <laughs> He's been he's been nuts. We are all going nuts. Yeah, you've been nuts for at least as long as he has. Was there a time before this? Um, in theory. I mean, in general, yes, Maybe there was. We were there too. You'll remember we were all together. Because I'm inside these tunnels, your voices are just kind of echoing off of these you know deep cavernous kinds of things so even your whispers are being heard (laughs) so uh updraft just begins to talk about time existing prior to right now that's and how that works and how you could trace it backward by reverse running a clock but you already knew that because that was your idea maybe i don't know if the rules would follow that because it sounds a little too uniform for this place it would certainly try to keep up with us initially <laughs> yes uh go ahead uh agent Updrift, make a search roll and uh add a plus 20. All right, we're rolling on against a 74 gang. 35. All right. Nice. So you're you're looking for JC Lens's bottle and you can feel this pull in a direction as you're kind of looking for it. And you're walking down these hallways and up and down stairs. There's no sense really of direction that you can pan out and you're just walking in the dark it takes you almost an hour and 
you kind of get stopped short because you see your flashlights close in on a hunched figure that's reaching into an alcove and examining a bottle and uh, Agent Unicorn what do they see uh, as she's looking at this bottle that's not hers well you see just just the back of Unicorn's head the hair's done up in a bun I to put my wig back on before we started playing. I didn't want to give it away. Um, <laughs> hair's done up in a bun. She's wearing probably a house coat, uh, slippers, uh, and, and a, a muumuu dress. Seems accurate for a grandma in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you can see she's she's looking at this and kind of carefully puts the bottle back. It's not hers. She can feel like there's no light. She she ah. must have been. Who knows how long she's no. been down here in the dark, looking for her bottle, but having to do it solely by touch. Ran. What? Somebody say my name. What? It's Dawn. Now turn around. My wig got all tangled in my glasses when I tried to put it on you. Also, Gran is bald at the moment. She's so fussing with her wig in the dark. Yeah. So she, winners. The but... chemo was extra hard on her. Yeah. There it is. It's frazzled. Frazzled old lady. hearing aids back in. Oh. What? Who's that? Who's that? Don? It's Don. Undine? Yeah. Where have you been? I've been looking everywhere for you guys. I, I thought I'd find you down here. Last I saw you, you were getting eaten by a paper mache monster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was not any fun. Thanks. Um, but I kind of brought it on myself, I guess. Uh, did it buy you enough time to get to the next stage? It did. I wanted to save you, but there was nothing we could do. Don tried. That's okay. Um, I know he tried, and, and I appreciate it, Don. Um, mm -hmm. So what are you all... Is that... Who's that in the robes? Oh, that's Updraft. That's Updraft. He's gone native. He thinks he's everybody now. He's still alive. That's I impressive. I am not everyone. We are all me. He's everyone. You see what I'm saying? It's all in him. Yeah, yeah, I see. You, unicorn. I mean, it's fitting. And he just walks up to the bottle that she's looking at and like holds the light so that she can see. And uh, is it JC Lynn's bottle? No, it is not. All right. Darn. So, <laughs> yeah. So just be like, Come on, I'll show you. You have a bottle in your hand too, right? Yeah, it's bottle in my hand, flashlight in my other hand. And like when he's walking from time to time, he'll just turn off the flashlight because he's not really using his vision at this point. And uh, he'll just turn off and walk in the dark, especially if it's like a real long straight portion because he's like, if y'all can't walk in a straight line, of course you can because I'm walking in a straight line. Just walk where I walk. And yeah. go yeah. on to JC's bottle. Hey, got any of those cookies? Well, Grant did have some time at the bottle bin, but they don't really have a lot of residence like cooking apparatus. Would she have made some like she wasn't cooking cookies or something? No, she <laughs> she wasn't cooking those things. They were coming out of the tin. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, she could have gotten some cookies from the the, the kitchen. That was First thing to the receipt. kitchen. <laughs> Why are all these sewing kits dumped out? <laughs> yes. Um, so who are you looking for? I've looked at a lot of bottles down here. JC Lens. She's just this way. Who do you have with you? Who's that? 
Updraft? No, no, in the bottle, silly. Oh. You joker. Don, you're always a joker. He was your uh, pinch shitter. His name was Union. George. George. I read off the label. George, what was that E name? Earl. Earl, Earl Lowe. Earl. Joe, George Earl Lowe. We can't find him. We assume that it's the bad kind. I know him. where he's going. We're oh. getting JC. That's just more important right now. I don't need a overwhelming sense of justice. I'll get back to that. Okay. What is he rambling about? That guy he just. He has he has taken a lot of trauma. We all have, but him in particular, he has taken a lot of trauma and his brain is currently not functioning quite right. <laughs> in the form of bullets and lived the most. Just say. He's bounced off the gates of death a couple times. He looks fine to me. Oh yeah, on the outside, he's doing pretty good. But, and, and you, um, Ursine, uh, uh, how have, have you been? You don't look so well, dear. I don't feel so well, Gran. I'm a little worse for the wear, too. I think these two might be worse off than me, but I am not well either. You have to love yourself. Just continuing. Just calls Just it from out. down the hallway. In Just the calls dark. it from down the hallway. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Dog does not like the wig. He's. It's not happy about me wearing the wig. We see your dog he just leap up and take it. Give me the side eye. He is he uncomfortable. Doing? He's like, he doesn't like when, me. He doesn't like it when people put things on their head. He <laughs> hates hats. He hates them. That's funny. And to me, everything can be a hat. So the worst is that Brian had this this horse head mask, right? One of the latex horse head masks. <laughs> Balder was terrified of that thing terrified of it even if it just came after the one time he saw it on brian said if it even came out of the closet then balder was losing his shit so yeah sorry <laughs> totally unrelated that's funny Do dog oh, hates things that go on people's heads <laughs> all right yes yes he does he'll be okay though sorry i, I took us down that rabbit hole um nope. okay it's fine uh, are you following uh, as Agent Updraft is just kind of wandering off into the dark? Yeah, I'll yeah. kind of walk along with them, too, and just fall in line like like old times. Well, this is good. The gang's all together. Yeah, I sure missed you guys. Okay. Uh, go ahead and do another search roll there, uh, all right. Agent Updraft. All right, we're rolling on... A 54 or is it still plus 20 uh plus 20 yeah so 74 that's an 84 that is a fail okay just checking something blah 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 yeah yeah that part okay um you are going down one of these hallways it kind of tightens and you see a uh, a marionette that is standing by a shelf and it's wearing a police uniform a new york police uniform and you see it is it, it's articulated fingers are trying to take this bottle and set it upright and you can see it has been shattered into uh into pieces you you catch a glint here and there but as uh as it kind of turns in the light it looks like gary it looks like gary is he having problems getting the bottle on the shelf he is and what's more is once he sees updraft his hands kind of grip around the top of the bottle like a shiv and it starts to lope towards you oh all right so if we're gonna be this way 
I guess I'm going to uh, set the bottle. No, I'm not. I'm going to hold the bottle in my hand. And uh, I'm going to choke up on that about two-thirds of the way up the handle on that sledgehammer. Yep. And just drive it into his face. All right. Roll a... Uh, is, there, is there anybody else that's... You kind of have a moment as you see it clicking down the hall at you. Yeah. I was going to say, it, you, you whatever you rolled, you're going to pass that one, I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> has, has, uh... uh... Granny's been staying at the hotel. So, yeah. Uh, is she... So she's been there for a bit. If she would have grabbed something uh, on her way down here, that's completely acceptable. Changing my agent name. <laughs> I forgot to do that at the break. I just looked up and realized. Um, no, I was going to say, have have I run into any of these down here in the labyrinth? Uh, yeah. yeah, they never seem to bother you. Well, I'll, he's he's fine, Updraft. No, no, no need to, to hurt him. He's not going to hurt us. He's okay. I see these all the time, you know, they just run around. <laughs> you know life. better. And, and like, as Updraft is swinging, he just says very nonchalantly, you know better than to entertain nonsensical, sentimental connections with random people we meet in life. And so he just drives that hammer down, <laughs> like, square in the face of this thing. Nice. Uh, I don't know what damage for a um, hammer would be. Do a D8. But, yeah, do okay. a D8. I'll say if, if, if it's a strength test divided by five, I got a 66. <laughs> All right, a D8. Yeah, feels yeah. good. Yeah. Hmm. All right, so. Five. Oh, all right, yeah, you smash it against the wall, and you see, uh, you see it. It kind of bounces off, uh, but it's still moving, and it is moving towards updraft, and it it runs up and it grabs a hold of him, and is trying to grip strongly. Uh, go ahead and roll a, a. Do you want to dodge? I guess updraft. What do you want to do? You want to dodge? You want to. I don't think I can dodge. I just uh, took my action hitting this thing in the face. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's kind of bouncing back at me. Uh, so I don't know if I can dodge. If it tries okay. to grab me, I guess I would contest that. Yeah, let's do it that way because uh, there is a there is a bit of that. Yeah. So is that just unarmed combat? Yeah, just doing unarmed combat. Oof, no. Failed no that. Dice. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's got its grip on you. Uh, we will go to the top. Of the I hug it back. I, yeah. <laughs> you hug it back. Um, Uh-oh. Unicorn, what's your dex? Uh, dex. 11. Uh, 11, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Undine, you, you saw Updraft really clean this thing's clock. Its face is kind of hanging off a little but it is holding on to him uh, very strongly. What do you do? I'm going to separate its arm from its shoulder joint. Right. It's done, dashes over and drops the pickaxe on the joint. Please or do. in that, there, that area. Yeah. Let's see. That's melee. I, yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Alphabetical. There we go. Need Seven. these hot rolls. Come on. Oh, well. <sighs> I missed. Um, I have a 70 and I missed. Oh no. Well, mark it for improvement. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Um, you actually end up taking out another bottle as it kind of glances off to the side. You take something, it skitters down the hall and cracks. You can hear it. Uh, Agent Ursine. As of right now, it just has him, but it's not actually yep. doing any damage. No, but uh, go ahead and roll an alertness. Okay. Come on, dice. Here. Don't fail me now. Because you have all... Oh, 
night long. I crit failed <laughs> with a 77. Okay. Not a big deal. You're just, uh, it's tough to see. They're kind of moving around a little bit wrestling. It's, it's difficult to say what this thing's plan is. Let's just go ahead and get all the bad rolls out. <sighs> okay. I am going to... I don't want to shoot it because it's too close to him. I am going to wait to see what happens. All right. Uh, Agent Unicorn. Um, well, I think I'm just going to just going to. Uh... I th I'm going to go for the bottle. That updraft is how I'm gonna pull it away and see if that distracts the uh, the mannequin. <laughs> see if that gets him to let go. Of course, Gran is always self-sacrificing for her team. So. <laughs> so I'll reach out and try and snatch that bottle away from updraft. Okay. Are you gonna resist that updraft, or do I do I just succeed? Do I need to roll against? Oh, you're anything? trying to take the bottle, George's yeah, bottle, George's out of my bottle. hand? Yeah. Uh, no, that's yeah, that's that's fine. I mean, I trust me with my things. Okay. <laughs> oh, Very happy hi, with this other development. Me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Good idea, other me. We should work together. That is Hold exactly what I needed so that I'd have right. both my uh, hands for you to rip this thing apart. I'm right there for you. So yeah, I'll take the bottle and then just kind of backpedal behind back behind everybody else again. All right, updraft. <clears throat> it is uh, back to you. I'm also letting go of the hammer. I passed the flashlight off to Grain when we met yeah. up with her. Yeah. Um, I'm also dropping the uh, letting go of the hammer. I'm going to lock both my arms around this thing and just basically rip it, like pull on it so hard, so sudden, almost like trying to rip start a lawnmower, right? Yep. And just throw this thing into the wall. Okay. going to break yeah. it, basically. All right. Yeah, let's uh, either unarmed combat or just pure strength if you're... No matter, it's success either way, but it is exactly on the 40 of unarmed combat. <laughs> okay, this this is a good thing. You rip it off. Uh, go ahead and roll a d6 as you just kind of slam it into this wall. Four. Four? Oh, God, right. you can't... Right. Jesus Christ, that's a bad color. Yeah, and you can see one of its uh, shoulders pops off as you push it off of you and it it kind of uh, stops for a second and you see these little circles opening up on its chest uh, you can barely see and as you like push it off to the side and then you see a shunk as spikes spit out of it and then retract back in uh, incredibly fast uh, but it is then uh, trying to head back towards you. Uh, we are back up top with Undine. All right. So regain my composure and uh, put one right into the midsection of this thing. I, I don't think it. I saw the spikes. So, so that really hasn't changed my approach. Let's see. Die roller, die roller. Where did my die roller go? It closed. Ah. Uh, Let's see. Okay, here we go. Two. It's just got to be under 70. Rolling. You can't miss. No. No. <laughs> 94. Oof. Yeah, the ground chips underneath this, uh, you know, on the floor as it pulls back. This thing's pretty, like, pretty maneuverable. Uh, Ursine. Uh, it is separated from updraft at this point i am gonna go ahead and uh shoot at it then all right go for it that is a 56 i have 56 that is nice straight pass. <laughs> nice okay so yes, that's that's a this is success. Did you say it was D eight? Uh yeah, D eight. Okay. That's not D eight. Where's D eight? There's D eight. 
Six. Oh, nice. And uh, I guess where do you shoot it to end this whole debacle? Um, I was shooting at uh, essentially what would be center mass on a person. Okay. So. Yep. And you shoot it with that snub nosed, and what you hear is uh, it actually sounds like the bullet gets lodged in some servo somewhere as it judders and shakes and just kind of falls to the ground, clutching at Updraft's uh, robe that he's wearing. That thing had a nasty surprise built into it. Grab the uh, hammer and just go ahead and hammer this thing to pieces. Doesn't say anything. Doesn't just starts hitting it until it's just pieces on the ground. It may have been useful to be a little bit more systematic in that approach. Then we might learn more about how these things operate. But... It did deserve it, so. With sledgehammer, updraft turns to grain, reaches his hand out, takes the bottle. Oh, yeah, you're welcome, dear. Looks for looks up looks up into the right, trying to remember where it was that J C Lynn's bottle was. Catches it, and then points and just takes off down in that direction. I'm following. Yeah. Roll another search plus 20. All right, here we go. 66. This, uh, so each of these times you've been looking, it's taken about an hour. Yeah. And this is uh, no different. And finally, you see something kind of strange. There is uh, an alcove that is uh, actually lit. You see it in the distance. There's a, a small uh, light that kind of shimmers in it almost. And as you get closer, you find this uh, decorated alcove around a bottle that you have seen pictures of visions of you 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 recognize it mm -hmm. uh even before you get to it as jc lens's bottle and sure enough his name is on there you can see it stopped with a cork and it has this melted yellow wax containing the yellow sign stamped on top um everybody go ahead and make a uh an obs or observation and alertness roll Pass. Pass. Pass, pass, pass. All Fail. Right. Fail. Granny doesn't quite notice this, but the other three notice uh, that this uh, this bottle is actually set up on a, uh, a little bit of a mechanism. Uh, it looks like pulling, like taking the bottle will make something happen. Thank goodness. It's a trap. Indiana Jones style, right? Yeah, throw me the whip. That's what we got to do this. Okay, hold on. Real quick, I want to pick... I'm, I'm holding or check and see the weight if the weights on all these bottles are different. Mm -hmm. They are, yeah. Okay. So with that, I just want to kind of get a feel for the bottle that's on this mechanism. Kind of get yep. a feel for the weight, and then I want to find another bottle that weighs like that, and I'm going to Indiana well, Jones it. <laughs> all right, you're uh, you're doing that. Go ahead and do a uh, with your newfound assurance. Add a uh, do the search plus twenty one more time. All right, so all you've right. Got, you've got some additional skills at this point. Six. Yeah, you uh, you find a bottle that you're like, yeah, this is this seems like the right right bit all right and uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna swap that out all quick and athletic style i guess i don't know yeah. well <laughs> is that just dexterity at that point <laughs> yeah pretty much yeah go ahead and just do a dexterity 
or archaeology. No, it's going to be dead. If you fair. had archaeology, no I there's would no allow way. it. <laughs> that would have been awesome. All right, <laughs> you, here we go. You do have to say this belongs in a museum. Ironically, the this, dexterous archaeologist stands by and watches all this happen. This <laughs> belongs in a museum. 57 on a 50. Mm. 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 All right. Well, the bad news is your timing is a little off. And you swap it in it. Uh, you give it a little bit too much and you realize that there is a little bit of a wheel that uh, you pull JC's bottle off and it actually upsets the base a little bit. So when you try and swap the bottle off, it just slides to the floor. And all of you are kind of tensing up because you're thinking, what I'm backing thing. away. <laughs> yeah. This is a movie. I'm backing away. <laughs> yes, as the, uh, the um, you start hearing from this little uh, thing it was set on in this alcove, gears turning a little bit of ticking. And then there's just a little click and the wall behind the alcove swings open and you can see a dark stairwell beyond. All right. I thought we were all dead. Again. Like that. So, yeah. If you specialize in clockwork things, then this makes sense. Yeah. And as that door opens, and you all have JC Lindsay's bottle, go ahead and roll a d20, every one of you. And get that much sand back. Yay! Yay! We got sand back. Wow. And I, I bet it's Is not that a, a two? good roll. <laughs> roll, roll. That looks Actually, like a really well. 18! Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Don's back, baby! 13. Oh, 12. What the hell happened to my it's jacket? It's better than half, so I'll take it 12, 12 points. <laughs> Updraft over in the slippers is... <laughs> uh not doing great <laughs> every chance he's had to gain <laughs> more sand has just like no you can yeah. roll your d20 you get one you get two <laughs> his natural state of sanity was already a little tenuous and he was deep into it so <laughs> yeah yeah. It just keeps showing up. Yeah, that's two. I didn't even make enough back to hit my previous breaking point. Yep. <laughs> wow. Yep. Wow. So you are all still me. <laughs> we all feel better, though. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You all feel, some of you feel quite a bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, you feel like you found something important. So, quick rules question on that. Yes. So by gaining enough sanity to go back over your original breaking point, does it reset your breaking point or does your nah. breaking point stay low like it was? It yep. Stays. Just just okay. leave it where it is. Yep. Okay. You've gotten a reprieve. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right on. And and uh I was not clear. These steps actually lead up. And you can see it's it's dark and it's kind of misty up there. But I think well, that's, that's where we have to go. That is where we have to go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Onward and upward. The only way out is through. Onward, Macduff. So I will, yeah, updraft. Go ahead. I, I was curious. About? You're holding George's bottle. Are you? Uh, no, Grand's actually holding oh, George's Grand's bottle. Holding George's oh, how bottle. How did I get this? I'm holding JC's bottle. Yeah, you've got JC's bottle. So it's coming with us. Okay. We're collecting okay. all the keys. So now I have JC's bottle and a sledgehammer. Pretty sure I got all the keys. <laughs> and robes and slippers. You're doing great. We wish we had JC's bottle, but we do. Now. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. Kind <laughs> of coif the hood. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, you're dressed for it. This is great. There you go. There you go. Nice. Right? So it Very sounds nice. like Ursine is heading out. Nothing else you want to do here and heading up. Yeah. The only way out is through. 
Come on. We got to keep going. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. And Updraft is just like with the same confidence that Christopher Columbus and the Conquistadors. <laughs> Like that, they handled themselves completely undue. Does not make any sense. No one, everyone watching Updraft can still tell that even as they feel better, he barely made it. Barely made any difference. You're still not sure if anything happened. He just charges off <laughs> up the stairs, sledgehammer in one hand, bottle in the other, arms pumping. Like a geriatric woman walking around the mall at 9 a.m. That speed walker thing going on. Yeah. yeah. Just you and you and Grant side by side. He hasn't changed a bit, has he? Straight up the stairs. Weapon in one hand, bottle in the other. He never changes. Right. I've uh, seen that I look before. Don, yeah, anything from Don before he is he heading up as well? He goes up last, turns around. Shrugs, smiles real big, and follows. Okay. Hey, I think Gran has seen this look once before, about the time we entered uh, Van Fitt's apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this look once before. I know shit's about to go down. So, <laughs> All right. So the agents storm up these stairs into the mist. And... The next thing you feel, you're waking up. And there's pain in your back, especially for Gran, as you're kind of moving around the rocks that you're lying on are not comfortable at all as they shift under your weight. And your eyes open, you can see a night sky above you, dark with some thin clouds around. Hanging over you are two moons and strange black stars. You hear the lapping of waves on a shore and you feel just that that moment that you got from JC that rush is squashed almost as you just feel this intense dread and just depression like you're being watched as you wake up on the edge of a lake Where in the hell are we now? Every time we go through a door, it takes us somewhere different. It never changes. <laughs> I swear. And it's always him. He's always the one going through the door first. It's uh, one day always I'm going to stop us. following him. We're not really moving as much as it's moving around us. Right, right. Yes. But where are we? Two moons. That's not so normal. I think let me check one little thing. I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep going. I'm just that's checking okay. something. That's actually refreshing because that means the facade is down. It's not even trying anymore. Oh, kind of like when we break breaking the fourth wall. Is that what yeah. it's called? We've kicked right through the scrims and we're in backstage. Oh. You don't know the half of what we even found out, Grand. At which point I'll take some time to start to tell her the vast number of stories, the things that have happened since we last saw her. Yeah, when you get done, uh, Grand will basically say, yeah, the ever since I rode the white tiger, the paper tiger here, it's <laughs> just been, I arrived on the back of a, a paper tiger and just seemed so completely normal and they told me one day you guys would get here, so I just waited for you and went about my days searching for my bottle and, uh, you know, trying to stay off Elmer Lizette's bad list. He's quite the nosy one. 
Last time I saw him, he was dead. Although he's probably no longer in that state, much like uh, you. Yeah. Probably. But, you know, I'm here now, so we can make up for lost time. And, uh, Ursine, as you're talking, you're kind of getting, because you've been catching up to speed and everything, and you realize there's something else that you know. And it doesn't make sense that you know this, but it, it feels like something maybe you forgot and it's coming back to you. Uh, if you check the handouts, uh, Ursine and Undine both know certain information. And this is not like secret. You can feel free to talk about it. But also, uh, Updraft and Unicorn, as you're getting through this, you start to realize some information as well as the mist. Your eyes are adjusting to the light of these moons, and you start to see the city surrounding the lake. These towers spitting up like ribs. Buildings pocked with bullet holes and explosion damage collapsed and as you look they almost seem to shift just at the edge of your vision and when you look back they're not the same that they were before you seem like this lake is surrounded by this moving flickering city um why don't we read it out loud for the Ursine or Undine? Would you like to read the first bit? I can read it. Let's see. Is it going to be in handouts? Uh, it is in handouts. It is the, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of the yellowish one. Uh, hang on, I'm going to have to blow this up so it's larger. Because of the font. <laughs> Hope you all like cursive is ruled by the king in yellow. There's an alien country that absorbs ruined and corrupt places and times into itself. Various locations on Earth are connected to Carcosa and are in the process of being consumed. Yathil, the city, was absorbed by Carcosa long ago. But time has no place here, so Yathil is forever being consumed. Holly is the lake at the edge of your thill. You feel a strange familiarity here, as if you saw it once in a dream. Then Updraft and Unicorn, you, you have a little bit extra. You want me to... No, I'll... Yeah, one of those is kind of spoilery, but we won't worry about it. <laughs> you want me to yeah, read the last half? Yeah, All right. uh, yeah, the new stuff, that'll work. All right, so uh, time has no place here, and so you still is forever being consumed. A living reflection of Yutl lives on in the depths of Lake Holly. That is where the king holds court. You have been here before, or perhaps will be here again, or will never leave. It feels hazy and dreamlike, but familiar, like a long lost childhood home. Oh my that God. one's kind of spoilerific. Um, just, just one mention of a place is it's not a big deal. Yeah. But there we go. I shared those with the folks at home as nice. well. Nice, nice. Good reading. Good reading, everyone. Good job. And yeah, good. Well, well done. Well done. And uh, as you think about the lake, you look out against it, and the water is black and still. You're. Uh, you can't even see the far shore. It's the mist, the night, it's difficult to see. 
you don't see any lights over there you think the city might extend that far who can say but you're watching the there's little pinpricks of light below the water and there are additionally um boats you're now realizing kind of out of the mist these long ancient boats just sitting on the shore of the lake and we see pin lights beneath the surface like right far below or just below uh quite a bit far below okay. and you're you're kind of walking over and looking huh it, go ahead and do an int times five roll just combine that in one anybody that's looking at the water can do this as well if they would like to and times five yeah and times five I don't see it. Put back 80. Oh, yeah. That's a pass. Pass? Yep. Uh, Undine, how'd you do? Uh, he fell into the water. No. He, he fell into the water. I fell into the mute. Uh, <laughs> I passed. Not the moat. The okay. mute. I'm, I'm just mute. like staring <laughs> yeah. slack jawed at all the architecture and then. I noticed everyone's looking at the water, so I look at the water. Yeah. So for the two that passed, you realize that what you are looking at is not just lights beneath the water. They are the lights of a city with avenues laid out like spokes of a wheel, maybe about 50 meters beneath the water. And as you look kind of down in that, you recognize, especially Undine, you recognize some similar shapes and you think that what is down there is a copy, a still standing version of this ruined city that you are in. I keep panning my head towards the city and then down in the water and then back of the city and I hold my hand up in like the shape of a backward L checking angles and looking down at the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're seeing some of these almost like turnip shaped buildings at the top uh, that you now see. Yes, I can see the, the full of it down there. Uh, strange architecture, uh, lots of columns, that sort of thing. Lamps that are unlit here but down there are fine. So the city in the water looks to have life and the city nearest is ruined. I, how close are we to the water? You can get up to it pretty easily. Okay. Don't, don't get too, too close. What are you thinking? Um, alien ecosystem? Perhaps. Probably love apex predators live in water? Or? Perhaps, but it at least on the surface appears that that is alive and where we are is dead, almost like it's a mirror image that'll a one full of life. I do want to touch the water. I wouldn't do that. Are there any sticks nearby? Um, you could find a, you're probably more likely to find like a piece of metal from the city, but yeah, you could find something to poke the water. Okay. I have no idea what they're talking about. That's what I'm Because I didn't do. see shit. So I'm just going to read the bottle while they. Well, that reading the bottle is quite easy. It says J.C. Lins. Um, uh, Nothing just else. As a, yeah, it's just that. I'm afraid. Okay. Um, 
uh, Agent Ursain, you actually, as you're looking, you realize you maybe think, oh, I'll go look in the boats real quick, just grab an oar. There's no oar in there. In fact, there's no sail, there's no paddles, ropes, even a till. You just walk up to it. It's just this huge boat. It could fit maybe like 20 people. And at the front of it is a snake, like kind of head reaching out. And you can see the other boats are also embellished with like animals uh, around it. But uh, yeah, okay. poking the water. Yeah. So there is nothing in this boat. There's nothing in the boat, uh, but you are okay. able to find a like a piece of rubble, a uh, bit of metal okay. that pulled off of some fence, maybe. And you uh, you poke the the lake. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It's kind of just dis uh, distilling the water. Uh, when you touch it, there is a uh, a bit of a fog that rises from it, spe uh, like spreading into this low haze as the ripples spread out and kind of form a little circle around where you put it. Uh, it looks empty. Like it's just haze now. That's not normal. Um, can I see that piece of metal? Mm, here you go. What is this, Nathan? Uh, it is a bit of a fence. Is it uh, steel? Is it something I'm familiar with? An alloy? Um, yes, it would be pretty common around, you know, the 50s or so, you think? Because uh, you've got a pretty good history, right? Oh, yeah. I've got a uh, 60. Um, it actually very much reminds you of Russian design. But yeah, it's, it's beyond eating. that. It's a fence. Yeah, sorry. The city is being eaten forever. It's almost like this. This threw up in Abigail Wright's apartment. All of the stuff that had been eaten just manifested there. That's quite possible. Uh, we should definitely stay together. Can we walk the streets a little? Actually, um, yeah, I'm good with that. Let's take a look around. I'm going to carry this piece of metal in hand. Oh, we, we still have our weapons, right? Yeah, yeah. You Everything you brought with you into the, the tunnel is still on you. It's just you don't know how you got from the stairs to the lake. It's a little fuzzy what exactly happened, but you're here now and you don't think any been, and nothing's been taken from you. Okay. So looking at these boats with the different animals carved on them, Mm -hmm. um, the mirror image uh, the little bit of knowledge that we had gotten earlier I think I think Unicorn was around when, when the night manager we had met the night manager and he talked about Carcosa and um, the battle and the war Gonna make an anthropology roll to see if this would be something that might look normal of a civilization, even like after a war. Does uh, this look sure. like a yeah. war-torn civilization? Uh, I mean, you don't even need to make a roll for that. Actually, is yes, this looks like a place that war uh, consumed. I guess would probably be the, okay. the most elaborate way to say is something terrible happened you you don't know that anything could even live here there's doesn't appear to be any kind of food uh, i mean there's water but as yeah. you can see from what erstein just did is she touched it and it seemed to haze yeah that's probably not not good to drink um so part two is and and i'll guess throw it out there again for anthropology or maybe and that probably just anthropology, I guess, is the boats. Would I know mm -hmm. that civilizations you have mythologies about transporting and ships and that sort of thing? 
would my anthropology lend me to know or or maybe look at these ships as possibly some religious ship that might like a, a boat of the dead for instance like the river of sticks um yeah go ahead and do a anthropology on it because you're kind of looking it over here yeah do we hear crickets or any life at all no nope it is nice and quiet Oh, yeah, baby. A 12, yes. Um, so taking a closer look at the boats, uh, they're all about the same. Like, they could fit about 20 people in them. You think they were each cut from maybe one single tree trunk? Like, hmm. each of them, not all from oh, okay. one. But, I'll yeah, say, like, a, a the tree. yeah, about, well, I mean, about 10 meters. So It's still a big tree yes, for, yeah, per boat. A, yeah. yeah. So they look like and, dugouts? They do, and that's kind of hitting us. Like, this is not really a great design for a boat, right? And you, uh, you just kind of reach and touch it, and yeah. you, you know, you're expecting something heavy. It moves like you push it, and it moves quite easily. You think if you were to like want to move this around, you could easily do it by yourself. Yeah. When that answers a question. When it moves in the water, does the haze form from the ripples? It does. Okay, that's that was. Yep. That was yeah, kind you, of curious. you kind of tip it in there, and what's more, you start to see it's going further now, and the haze starts to spread along the lake until the entirety of it is covered, and you can still see the lights shining from below. But the lake itself now doesn't even look like water after a few minutes. Is it is just this patch of haze? Is there any smell to it or anything, or just you kind of you kind of give it a sniff? And I mean, this area up here smells. I mean, like ash, and death, and you're kind of sniffing it. There's something you kind of you you smell something different. You think. Yeah, there might be life down there. Like you kind of smell a living city, if you will. Like that so New York like Musk. Exhaust? Uh, maybe gunpowder. There's some of that. Okay. Um, there's a little bit of like steam smell. So the sulfur uh, you catch and like steam. a waft. Yeah, a waft of like a cooking maybe. Hmm. That's very strange, but water does trap smells i wonder if it's a form of camouflage um while you're thinking about that uh agent undine you'd said you wanted to look into the city a little bit yeah okay um and i'm gonna follow are we on the outskirts okay. or are we actually in the city uh you are on the uh it's kind of tough to tell from the way it moves but you think you're in the center of the city it's kind of like your gut feel from seeing what's below and then up here mirrored. It's probably like that. You kind of see the spokes of the road leading out. Um, but any road you go looking for, it's not like you could just follow it out of town. There are collapsed right. buildings, various uh, craters that make it difficult. I'm looking for street signs or riding on buildings, posters, mm -hmm. things of that sort. This is really strange. It's obviously a Cold War era Eastern Bloc city, but it's not anything that I recognize. Like, look at these towers. That's not... That's what you do if you have a lot of money and are just silly. <laughs> like, that. that's not something someone would build in a city. At least not by... Our world state. Yeah, and uh, I've put in handouts. You actually do find uh, some posters set up on a street. Um, they're faded and crumpled, but they show this figure behind a golden mask with a snake running through it, a black star behind them. Uh, and you can see Le Roy and Juan. Uh, apologies to our French listeners. And the yellow sign on it. 
Um, and Ursine, as you're walking through, you see there is a a building that has a side knocked open, and you recognize that there is it looks like some sort of lab that used to be there. This is him. Yeah, can't can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. No, I am uh, gonna walk up to the edge of the this building and take a good look inside without going inside. Right. Yeah. As as Undine is saying, it's it's him, and you are looking in this lab. You can't even tell what it was for. It's been destroyed. There's equipment that might have been useful at one point to you you'd probably recognize medically but is at this point destroyed uh books are there but they have been so water damaged just from looking at it you can tell they're useless are there shell casings uh yeah there's there's some shell casings around some bullet holes well, if there's if there's french written on this poster this is the king in yellow and I pick up one of the shell casings. Is there a standard maker stamp or caliber um, stamped on like you would find on any brass cartridge? Yes, I think there would be. Um, uh, what you would find on it, though, uh, is you're you're kind of looking for a maker's mark, and what you find are three curved lines that almost look like a wave like the yellow sign disconnected um no like uh almost like a claw mark uh like that and they are uh just imprinted into the casing gotcha i don't think i have an image my posters are kind of iffy at this point so this is a nowhere play but it was real somewhere at least to the inhabitants. We haven't seen any bones or anything, have we? Nope. There's no bodies. No skeletons. These it's cartridges. Like it, mm -hmm. Go ahead. It's like it just ate random things and pulled random things from all of time and space into this one place. Yeah, that, that would be why the posters in French, I would assume. And those towers are wrong. And this shell casing is wrong. It's almost like an amalgamation of lots of things creating a bunch of nonsense, kind of like that book you found. With the alternate history. Yeah. Or a hastily constructed idea of what a city would have been kind of like what we ran into with the extras and such earlier. Like it feels more dead than that, though. I agree. I, I think we're at the source. So unfortunately, that leaves us if we can't find anything here, there was nothing in the lab. I didn't see anything usable. That leaves us with one option. We have to go down there. I think so. And I want to be clear, too, in my description of the boat, uh, because uh, it had been pushed out a little bit. It is floating in the mist, the haze. It is not like it's sinking down below it. We go out into the lake and see what is there. That's all I can imagine we can do. I, I agree. Think, yeah, uh, that would be my suggestion too. Is we hop in a boat and updraft climbs in a boat. Do you hear that? Yeah, and I'll go into the explanation. Oftentimes, cultures would, you know, want they would use ships yeah, such Viking. as this to to well to transport things that didn't know where they were. Like, think about the river Styx. When yeah. a soul is lost to hell, it doesn't know where it's going. 
So the river sticks, they get on a boat. So and think, the river goes in a direction, so it doesn't correct. really need steering mechanisms. Correct. And the, the smell of the mist, there's definitely life down, or a, a city. I think, what if the, the lake is not as deep as we think, and it's just a layer? I don't think we're going to get there by standing around in this place. Nope. Let's jump in a boat. No, let's get in a boat. It really bothers me that there's no there are no crickets. There's nothing here. This is yeah. completely dead. And I can continue the my thought on the when we get in the boat and we're going to shove off and then jump in, I guess, because it will move itself pretty easily. Um, that Perhaps this is like a, a veil, a, a a layer of camouflage to keep it hidden from intruders or combatants or people that might mean it harm. Oftentimes cities or civilizations would use natural habitat as a blind or a hiding spot from predators. Just a thought. I will... Once we have the boat in the water, I'll place my hand on the um, the animal uh, masthead and, with intent, try to drive us out into the lake. Okay. Yeah, and as Undine puts his hand on it, the boat just starts to move yes. out towards the lake. Uh, where are you taking it in the lake? You're just going towards the middle? That seems to make the most sense. Okay. It, you fairly quickly find yourself... Uh, I'm assuming you're all on the same boat. Yeah, sure. Um, and you soon find yourself kind of surrounded by this haze, uh, bobbing a little bit, uh, the lights below you shining up strangely, and you, you see, like, some shadows moving down below you. But it's uh, it's kind of peaceful and quiet. Like large scale shadows or shadows in the city? There are shadows that are above the city. Oh, so up in the sky. No, below you. Oh, below above, us. Yeah. Okay. In... But above the lights of the city below. Yep. Gotcha. The cream in an Oreo cookie. Or, this, guy, yeah. this guy's cities. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. If we sit there a moment, I'll move us to the other side of the lake. Okay. Yeah, you uh, you move and you. It, it takes a while. Like this is a pretty big lake. Mm -hmm. You could not see the other side in the haze. And as you get to it, you find yourself once again kind of pushing up on shore a little bit. Uh, the ruined city uh, sweeping out ahead of you, flickering on the edges of your vision. I didn't want to leave us on the lake very long. There were things down there. Yeah. I guess there's more work for us to be done in the city. Uh, can Maybe. Y'all make an int times five roll. I think there is a critical clue that you... It's been a little bit. Ah. Drop my dice. 37. That's success. Oh, that's a critical failure. 77. I passed. <laughs> Perfect. Um, you think back to Abigail's letter. She said, go now, find the hotel, the labyrinth, the author, his bottle, the city, the lake, its shadow, the battle, then the party. And you start to think, maybe this city is not the shadow. Yeah, we have to go the oh. lake, its shadow. So the lake is the shadow of the city. So we need to find the battle now that we have 
because we're on the other side. Well, you're on the other side, but you don't feel like you've gone to the city. You you would have expected a change. I think the, yeah. we need to go to the city in the water. We might have to get in the water. All right, let's see if we can have the boat go down. If we okay. will it to. I'll let me volunteer for that. So okay. I'll climb back in the boat and shove off. Can you guys push? Well, actually, I can just drive it. Yeah. I'll try to will it downward slightly. All right. And the three on the shore, you watch as the boat quickly dips out of sight below the haze. Uh, Agent Undine, you feel yourself traveling. It's like you're traveling just along the lake. You, There's no water around you. You're just basically floating in the sky as you descend downwards. And you can see in the fog these vast beasts 30 meters long easily. And you get a good look now. There are these massive whales just floating through the sky, swimming along but they have too many eyes to be fully whales. They're not very comforting looking. Understood. No, they are not. Uh, and you can additionally see there are things flying behind these whales. They're about mm -hmm. the size of horses. I'll try to give them all a wide berth. That makes sense. Uh, and it takes uh, not too long. It you basically go right down and you find yourself landing with a, the boat small thud in the center of a city uh, bristling with life. That sense of childlike wonder is taking over. <laughs> I will look at the boat. I'll touch the masthead and say return and then turn on my heel and immediately proceed into the city. Yeah, that's great. Uh, the other three, you see the boat pop back up above the waves without an undine. Fine, men. It either worked or he's dead. Either way, we don't have much choice but to go forward. Yeah. How suitable a I mean, game. I'm still, <laughs> we're still here. We're all still here. Yeah. And just get in and updraft will just do exactly as he knows to do because he saw himself do it and he places his hand on the mast exactly the same way that undine did was it left or right-handed uh, right right-handed right hand all right so he reaches out with his right hand places it the exact same way and then does his best undine impression and wills them to the city is that disguise? Is that a disguise role? Yeah, I, I don't think I don't think you have to. You're so insane. You're just doing it. Um, and you also see these uh, creatures swimming above. But uh, we will kind of cut there, I think, as the boat lands one more time uh, at the secret city at the bottom of the lake in in Yithil. No, uh, no sand rolls for the giant whales with multiple eyes. Not the not the whales, but we'll do the sand rolls of the city next time. This is great. Next time, dun dun dun. <laughs> sanity rolls out of the gate first. I don't need any sanity rolls. Yeah, this that's is great. <laughs> How I like to start every session. Sanity rolls. They're great. <laughs> this is like roll sand about. and dodge. Asking Santa Claus for an alien <laughs> civilization to explore, and there it is. Holy cow! <laughs> wow, that was fun. Even though I died again, but now Grand's back. You're getting great at it. I am. Hey, Grand's back. Yeah. It was just you know, we'll talk all about character deaths. That was uh, second character and three deaths because I died on the way to the hotel too. So I think I'm winning the death count with this campaign. Three I thought we were playing by golf everybody. rules. Yeah, oh, are we playing by golf rules? <laughs> the low spoiler wins and now we are and i can say this correctly we are solidly in chapter four dun, 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 chapter four all right is that the that is the final the ultimate 
the end of the world of the end. Wow. All right. Well, we're in it. We're in the end of the world, folks. And we'll be back next week to find out where we go from here into the city under the, the, the mist. <laughs> Did you have something you wanted to add? No, I was just saying, which is the way that's clear. Ah, ah okay. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, everybody, that'll do it for us. The United Adventure Company tonight, uh, another great game. Nathan and the gang, thanks so much, everybody. Um, we'll be back Saturday. We're not playing Horde of the Dragon Queen, but we are playing Dungeons & Dragons, a little one-shot. A couple of our players had to uh, take the weekend off, so we are going to still play some games, but we're going to play something different, a little special one-shot. And then uh, next week, we're back with Delta Green and Weird on Tuesday night and stuff coming up at the end of the month. So hang in there, everybody. Lots of fun stuff coming for us here at the United Adventure Company. If you missed anything on tonight's episode, check us out on the YouTube. Give us a like. Give us a subscription over there as well as a follow and a sub here. But until next time, we're the United Adventure Company. Easy for me to say. We're the United Adventure Company. Deception is a right. Truth is a privilege and luxury. Uh, I screw it up every luxury, time. That's just uh... <laughs> and luxury. That's just innocence. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I think I think we're there. Yes. Um, stay weird. You know anyway. what it means. We yeah, know what it means. It. Yeah. The language. That's just an obstacle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Scripts. We don't follow them here. <laughs> anyway, we'll see y'all next time, everybody. Have a good night. Bye-bye. All right.